Hello and welcome to another video. Today I'm going to be showing you my parabolic reflector. Now this design isn't very good. It got thrown together in one day in the basement with pretty cheap regular materials. So it's not a perfect design. It's not a very good design. And if you look online, you can probably find better versions of this kind of thing. Okay, to start, I'm going to show you each of the three parts that I use in this reflector. The first part is the actual paraboloid. As you can see, this is just tin foil and cardboard. You can kind of see the outlines here. There are just some, there are panels shaped kind of like pizza slices, very narrow pizza slices that are bended into a paraboloid shape. This might give you a better view. So then there are just a bunch of tin foil sheets on top. And the way it works is it takes light coming from here and the light bounces off of the side and it keeps bouncing off the sides until it reaches a focal point where it gets concentrated. So the way this works is you can take an energy wave. Obviously you can use light because this is a reflective material but it also vaguely works with sound. I don't know, I don't think heat because that's different, but you can take a bunch of lighter sound in a received over a wide area and concentrate it. So over here we have the second piece. This is a basic reflector. It's not as good, it's even less efficient than the paraboloid, but it goes here and it's not attached right now, but it goes in this hole and the light gets constant. So this is not actually part of the reflector, but with this, it will be used with the third part, which I'll show you in a second. The light goes here and it gets bounced upward into a receiving box, which brings us to the third part, this box. This reflector is designed to be used in sunlight where it takes sunlight and concentrates it in one place. The way this one works is it concentrates light and puts it in this box. And optimally, the way it'll work is it will heat up this box. It's pretty basic, just like the reflector itself. It is just newspaper to insulate heat. Heat gets concentrated and kept in here. It doesn't just leave if you're using it on a cold day. The bottom of the box is black paper, which absorbs heat as well. It's just a regular cardboard box. And there's a, you may have seen this little metal stick. That is actually a thermometer here, which is shoved in and taped. It's not a disposable thermometer or anything. It's a pretty high quality one but we're just using it temporarily to measure the heat without disrupting the whole setup. Then it's covered in, t in plastic wrap further to insulate and assure that heat does not escape. So now let's show you all three pieces put together. And voila, all the pieces are assembled. So now you may be realizing this looks suspiciously familiar and it is similar to a satellite dish because Satellite dishes use the same mechanics to concentrate lights taken, um, received from very far away, hundreds of miles of space from the ground to the satellite's orbit because light scrambles and you have to, you have to have a large area to, of receiving to be able to um, capture all of the information. The way this works, just to review once more, the light comes here, bounces off, and it gets concentrated here, and, it, and then it gets reflected up into this box and heats up the box. So we tried this outside and it worked a little bit. It was at room temperature, which is, it was more like 70 degrees. It's 60 now in Fahrenheit. And when we put it outside, it was about 40 degrees outside, but it didn't cool down. It instead heated up by one degree. That may not seem like a lot, but it's a really exciting to know that it actually did work. And it, at, it not only maintained the temperature inside the box, but it heated it up a little bit. So to my dad and I, that was a success. Anyway, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Wait, don't go. It's the next day. I have an update from last night when I recorded the video. So I only did one test before um, and it was cold inside and it was cold outside and it only heated up by one degree because it was the end of the day and there wasn't that much sunlight. And it was also very windy. So it was only um, operational for about 15 minutes before it got blown away and it cool started cooling down again. So we caught it and we got it back, but it cooled down and it was too late to do another test because there, there was no sunlight left. So 
Today, it was much nicer. The weather was nice. It was sunny. And best of all, it wasn't windy because if it was windy, it would have gotten blown around and the equipment might have gotten damaged. But today I did another test and it was about 65 degrees in the house. And when I put it outside over the course of an hour, heated up from, from 65 degrees to 105 degrees. And that is a much better test. So our design is better than I said in the video. I'm just proving my disclaimer from the beginning of the video. So it worked good. Thanks for watching and I'll see you later. Bye.